In this next gen cam power mill highlights video, we're going to be taking a look at customizing hotkeys or rather keyboard shortcuts within power mill. Uh, to do this, we'll have to go to our backstage manager in our file options here. And in the options over here, we'll have our keyboard shortcuts. And if you left click on that, that will bring up the pop up dialog to customize just about any command or any string of commands within power mill at a button click. Now, if we come over here to the very right hand side, you'll see a Four, four icons on the right. The one on the very right is our reset option. This basically resets it to the factory installed options. And if we look at the next option over the printer, this lists what those factory options are. And this will actually pull up a printable sheet that you can put out at your workstation uh, for review. Now, as you can see, there's only one page here. There aren't a lot of keys pre-mapped within power mill so that leaves us a lot of room to be able to customize what we want to do uh, typically the way i like to actually customize my shortcut keys is keeping it very simple anything that i can reach within my left hand i want to map not most commonly used things that i can click to uh, what i mean by that is is things within my ribbon interface that i use most of the time can be done within a customized ribbon interface. Things that I use all the time for view and other actions, I usually do with the quick axis here. But what I like to do with shortcut keys is map certain functions that I'm going to do on a regular basis. And again, I'll map that strictly to my left hand because I don't want to take my hand off my mouse 90% of the time that I'm working. Uh, if we look at what we can create here, you can create mapped buttons to any ribbon feature. So we can just select a ribbon feature of any kind and just map a button to it. So if I come into the home tab, if I want to create a toolpath and maybe raise that toolpath dialog, I can actually come in here and just click on the options. Now underneath there, you'll see this is the area where we can assign our shortcuts. Uh, this brings up what we're assigning our shortcut to, and then we can simply just map a key to it. Uh, so I'll start out with maybe command T or Alt T, let's try Alt T, and I can assign that to Alt T. And once I hit Assign and I hit Close, I can just test this function out. And you'll see that brings up my Toolpath Strategy Selector. Going back into our keyboard options here, let's look at some of the other options that we can do. We can also assign commands within power mill. And now a command is any single command within power mill. When I'm doing anything within commands or macros in power mill, I oftentimes like to open up my echo commands from my home tab. That way I can see exactly what the command string is. Something that I do often is duplicate toolpaths. And I do this often based off of toolpath editing, or maybe I need to test another tolerance, whatever the case might be. I might actually want to activate a toolpath and then duplicate it. So if I come up to my toolpath tab here, you'll see duplicate is one of the options. And when I click that, I actually get a command and that is the copy toolpath command. Now from here, I want to actually take that and copy that command out of the echo commands window. And then we'll go ahead and create a new command button. It's as simple as clicking this plus sign next to the kind of command icon there. And if I hover over it, you see it says add command shortcut. I'll click on that and that adds a new command. This is where we're going to insert that command. So I'm going to right click and paste this in here. Now you don't actually want to control V into this form because when you do that, that actually sets the keystroke for that. And for this, I'm actually going to go ahead and say control and D. So let's go ahead and say control D for that command. And we're actually going to get something popped up here that lets us know under the current assignment that this is already set for something else. All right. And you can see this is set for the delete selected option. Now I don't often delete things with a shortcut key. I'm usually using my right click and I'm making sure that I've already selected the correct thing to delete. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come up to that command and I'm going to reassign that button first. So I'm going to say this is going to be control alt delete for D control D in the software. One other thing that you need to make sure that you do each time you make a change to the keyboard shortcut is to actually assign that option. If you do not assign it, then it will remember it's previously assigned keyboard strokes. From there, I can actually come back to my copy toolpath option and we can set this as control D. 
I'm going to assign that once again. And once it's assigned, I'll go ahead and close this to give it a test. And all I'm going to do is control D for that. You'll see that that's going to keep copying that roughing toolpath for me. Outside of commands, we can also assign macro functions to these shortcuts. So if I come into those keyboard shortcuts once again, we can actually come up here to the macro button. It looks like a little 1980s cassette tape uh, with a little plus sign. That's our macro recording option there. If I click on that macro button, it's going to add the new command to the keystroke here. And here we have the macro assignment along with a file selection here. Now I have several macros already predefined, so I can just come back in here and select my file from my list of macros and select any macro that I want to assign. In this case, I think what I'll do is my block shrink wrap option. I'll select my macro and hit open, and that assigns the macro to this keystroke. All right, so now we have to pick the keystroke for this. I'm gonna go ahead and con hit control and the little squiggly line next to my one button there, or rather the tilde button. And after I have that selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit assign. Now, this is something that I do quite often as a user is I'll have a block set for my stock doing most of my roughing. And maybe now I want to focus on something specific within Power Mill. One of the best ways to do that and focus on that for a toolpath is to actually shrink wrap a block and then go about assigning a toolpath to it. Going back into our options and looking into that customized shortcut key, we can now go ahead and save these options out if we want to use them later. I recommend if you do any customization within PowerMill to make yourself a save file so that you can quickly save this out within your keyboard shortcuts for later use. Or maybe if PowerMill gets reset for some reason, you can come back and you can recover those files. Let's go ahead and reset that. And just to test this out, we'll open up our forms there, grab that keys, select open, and now our macros and our commands are set once again. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching.